Hi guys, thank you for joining me. A lot of you have been asking about these earthquakes that have been happening there in South Carolina, the largest being a magnitude 3.3. There was also a 2.0 and a magnitude 2.8. Uh, they all occurred on Monday. The 3.3, uh, 2,792 people said they felt that earthquake and USGS gave it an intensity level of 5, which mean it was felt by nearly everyone. May have woken them up if they were sleeping. Some dishes and windows and so on were broken. Crack. Plaster in a few places, unstable object overturned, disturbance of trees, poles, and other tall objects. Yeah, did any of you notice uh, cars shaking? I managed to get two different monitors to download the information. Um, this one here is from Somerville, and the other one is from the Somerville Airport. This would be the uh, 3.3. This here is a signature of noise, more likely because it's at the airport. See how it gets slowly louder than dies out. Um, yeah, and this right here, well, it could very well be the gears, the wheels touching down on the runway. 1650, here's another earthquake signature. That would be the magnitude 2.8. And 352 people said they felt that earthquake. A few minutes later, there was another one. See how small it looks on here? So I really wonder about how they have these monitors set. That would be the magnitude 2.0. Many of you are probably concerned. You know the history of the area. In 1886, this was the location of the fourth shock for the Charleston earthquake. There evidently was many small earthquakes before the 1886 earthquake. Yeah, this area doesn't really have a lot of earthquakes. Yeah, I've talked about how most earthquakes are at night. Well, this one was at night. It was at 9.51 p.m. And it was felt as far away as Boston, Chicago, and Cuba. Um, as far away as Ohio, Alabama. Almost all the buildings in town were seriously damaged there in Charleston. Uh, 14,000 chimneys fell. There was a, um, a dam collapse. And the engineers to a train that were going through the area at that time uh, drowned when the uh, dam collapsed. The total damage was in excess of $5 million. And in today's dollar value, that would be $112 million. There's a lot of faults in this area. I got um, some of them drawn out in red. This here is the Woodstock Fault. That's the southern end of it. And this is a northern fault. There's also another fault in here called the Somerville Fault. So what's causing these earthquakes? Well, tension building up along these faults that are in this area. There's also a uh, thrust zone, which has tension built up, and that's because of the movement of the uh, Atlantic Ocean getting wider, the continent, the U.S. continent, slowly moving west. And I found a document that will show you the plate movement. Here we got a uh, foreland fold thrust belt. See how it's moving westward? I'll make this bigger for you. We got the Blue Ridge Thrust, Hayville, Hayesville Thrust, Western Blue Ridge, um, Brevard uh, Fault Zone, uh, Piedmont Interior Mount, uh, what else? We got the uh, Tallage Fault, and here you can see we have the Oceanic Transitional Crust, and see how it's all folding up popping up. Let me make this bigger now. You can see the different sections, the little pointy little arrows, the different directions that these fault zones are rising up. Well, that's why you got, yeah, the uh, mountains over there. Let me pull this over a little bit farther. Yeah, we got the sea level. And all this tension is building up or has built up, and that's why you're having earthquakes. 
That's why they had the 1886 magnitude 7.6 earthquake there in the town of Charleston. Yeah, leveled or almost leveled. They end up having to take them all down because there was so much damage. But it all started with these four shocks, earthquakes in the area of Somerville. History does have a way of repeating itself, don't it? Are you prepared for a large earthquake? Are you prepared to have broken gas lines, broken water lines, bridges that may collapse? Do you have a plan of where you're going to meet your loved ones if and whenever there is another large earthquake? I hope so. Most people aren't. So I hope that answered some of your questions. Yeah, it might make you a little more worried, huh? I would say less than 10% of the population is prepared for any type of disaster. Do you guys even have a bug out kit you carry in your car? Or in the closet by the front door? So what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for asking the questions. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you.